Your website's first contentful pane is when the browser renders the first DOM element on your page. This includes images, canvas elements, or text. In plain English, FCP is when the user can see some part of your page change. Often this comes as a header bar or background image. This element may not be the first thing rendered or loaded from the server, but it's the first that the user can see. Anything that your website contains within an iframe is not accounted for with FCP, nor is non-content painting such as change in background color. FCP is an interesting metric. While you can quantitatively measure it, it's also relatively subjective. Having a fast, first contentful paint is important because it causes the user to perceive that your site is loading quickly, whether or not it actually is. Your site might have a much longer, first interactive delay than competitors. That's the time after which the user can engage with the site. But it may appear to users as being faster because of your quicker FCP. That said, FCP is not about tricking your users. A low FCP time is a good indicator of page speed in general, and the methods with which you can optimize it can also affect other page speed metrics. What is a good FCP score? From Google's documentation, we could see that they rate FCP times in three categories, good, needs improvement, and poor. And they discuss how they achieve the percentile scoring used by their Lighthouse tool. Good is between zero seconds and 1.8 seconds. Needs improvement is between 1.8 seconds and three seconds. And poor is over three seconds. Let's learn how we can see in which of these categories your site lands. First up, Fuel tools. Fuel tools are those which you can use to track how the page appears to your users, like real users. These tools don't rely on APIs and assumptions about your site. They run directly against your server in real time so that you get the most accurate and up-to-date information as possible. Google's documentation shows these as the best fuel tools for determining FCP. PageSpeed Insights, Chrome User Experience Report, Search Console Speed Report, and Web Vitals JavaScript Library. Now let's talk about lab tools. Lab tools tend to simulate results as to what your FCP would be under ideal situations, rather than real world situations where latency, bandwidth, network congestion, and other roadblocks occur. These lab tools recommended by Google provide a look at what your site could be when running optimally. Lighthouse, Chrome DevTools, and PageSpeed Insights. How to optimize your FCP score. Those tools give you an overview and score of where your website's speed and FCP are, but they, as well as others, also give you insights into what you can do to optimize your FCP score and make it paint even faster. Here are some of the most common steps for how to fix your FCP times. Display text before and during font loading. Have you ever seen a website where all of the text on a page magically appears all at once when all of the other content exists around it already? That's because the browser is hiding it. The site's text content doesn't load until it's ready to read. Text is generally only a handful of bytes worth of content, but on many sites, it can take exponentially longer to load because the font file isn't ready for display. By telling browsers to display your text without delay has the potential to make your FCP almost non-existent. Simply add font display swap to any font face CSS you have. That alone might fix a lot of your FCP time issues. Minify your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Minification is taking out extraneous characters from your site's files. While spacing makes it easier for humans to read and parse, browsers and servers don't need them. Those spaces are still characters that take up bytes. By minifying things like your CSS files, you decrease the page size, which increases page speed and improves the time to FCP. If you're a WordPress user, you likely have a minification option in your theme or via your caching plugin already. For instance, Divi has simple toggles for CSS, HTML, and JavaScript minification under Divi, theme options, general. Here you'll find two toggles for minify and combine files. And with those enabled, your FCP will drop. Take out unused CSS. If you have code in your style sheets that isn't being used, then why keep it? Any old or unused code should be removed so that it's not being loaded each time your site is requested. Chrome DevTools can show you under the coverage tab which parts of your CSS are being loaded but not rendered. 
Additionally, Divi users should take note that we have completely overhauled the way our theme handles CSS and this kind of style bloat. Our massive Divi performance update keeps CSS dynamically sorted into small minified files that are based on the modules you've chosen on your page. On top of that, we identify what parts of that CSS loads above the fold and render that first, and that reduces your FCP. So not only have we automatically minified your CSS, we've also chopped it into bite-sized morsels for your browser and prioritized those that increase FCP in overall page load times. Reduce time to first byte. TTFB. Essentially, TTFB is when the very first byte of data is transferred to the browser. FCP hinges on this metric. So the faster it is, the faster your FCP is. The best methods of reducing TTFB and speeding up your page are pretty simple. Use a quality host like Divi Hosting, deliver content via CDN, and enable browser caching, which you can do in WordPress through a plugin like WP Rocket. Making sure that those three elements are taken care of adequately can dramatically decrease TTFB and by extension, your FCP. Use SVG or WebP images. While GIF, JPEG, and PNG are the most common image files you're using, if you swap those to either WebP or SVG files, both your FCP and TTFB can lower dramatically. With file sizes in bytes range, sometimes rather than kilobytes, your images will load in a blink. If you're a WordPress user, version 5.8 has built-in WebP support, and we have a rundown on how to use SVG images in our blog archive. Keep your DOM size small. Many of us overcomplicate our home pages in an attempt to impress visitors. However, these added elements bloat the DOM and cause a higher FCP time. You could help this by lowering the number of CSS selectors that you use. Pseudo selectors also complicate matters and increase the size of your DOM. So to recap, FCP is a user-centric perception metric that isn't necessarily indicative of site performance. As we mentioned earlier, two websites might have the exact same loading time, but the one with a lower FCP time might be seen as being faster. That perception can affect user experience, if not overall website performance. However, FCP is a fantastic metric to follow in order to bring the overall site performance to a higher level. Any actions that you take to lower FCP will also lower your overall page speed. So you can almost take it as a signal of your overall performance. A low FCP time generally won't coincide with a high overall load time. So if you need to use a single metric to see where you stand, FCP can be a good guidepost. You could also pair it with LCP or the largest contentful paint to get a more complete picture of what your users see in the first few seconds of coming to your site. And there we go, that's first contentful paint. For more information, check out the full blog post linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.